When we talk about players that are, are, are at a world level, I don't think Marcus Rashford gets into that category. I don't think he really has the game to play centre forward. He looked like his confidence was really low. What do you think's up with him? Rashford has been elevated to a position of greatness and expectation based upon that greatness is unjust because he's a good player. He's a good player. That is what absolutely oh sensational. And guess who? It's Marcus Rashford who's finished it. Sumptuous, scintillating, perfection. Rashford is the football-mad son of a mother who struggled to make ends meet. By the time he joined Manchester United in 2005, sacrifices were made just for him to play football like his idol, Ronaldo. No, not that Ronaldo. Really? I'm talking about the old-school Ronaldo. And when the coaches saw him, they knew he was special, and they worked on him. Fast forward to 2016, Marcus Rashford comes on as a last-minute change for another teenage prodigy who would cost Manchester United £50 million that same season. Yes, I'm talking about Anthony Marshall. Everyone was eager to see what the club's under-18 captain could do because he was a top-rated talent. And then he scored twice in a 5-1 win over Michelin to become Manchester United's youngest goalscorer in European competitions since the legendary number 7, George Best. Three days later in the Premier League, he was given his first taste of the intimidating atmosphere that is top-flight English football. But the lad did not fold. Another brace and an assist as Manchester United beat Arsenal 3-2 saw his name chanted to the highest heavens. Manchester United had found their next kid prodigy since Cristiano Ronaldo. But that weight of expectation was too much for the then 19-year-old Rashford to handle, and soon the hype began to look like a bust. The club kept the faith, he showed great quality in training, he was professional, and most of all, he was a role model. He had barely hit 21 when he started his initiative to feed the kids in his community from the money he made thanks to Manchester United's contract. Who wouldn't want to keep such a wholesome guy around? Louis van Gaal, the man who gave him his debut, took special care of him. Private coaching, counselling, special gym work. The legendary Dutch manager wanted to see Rashford succeed if it was the last thing he did. And the lad? He did not let any opportunity go to waste. He took full advantage of it all. But there was a problem. The weight of expectation. Manchester United had been without a trophy at the time for years. Sir Alex Ferguson departed the club in 2013 and their downward spiral started. David Moyes could not handle the weight of expectation of a big club like United, so he folded. In stepped the veteran Van Gaal and his thick skin, but he wasn't winning anything. It was looking like his style was not suited to Manchester United, despite the good results he was getting week in, week out. And then, he had to always play the young Marcus Rashford, who was one of the sharpest in training, but on game days, struggled to show the fans what he could do. Everything that the lad had dreamed of started to look like a nightmare. To make it worse, the injuries started to come. The club still kept the faith, because Rashford was a good professional and a wholesome lad. In the end, Van Gaal still managed to win an FA Cup with the club, the club's first trophy since Sir Alex Ferguson. But two days later, something surprising happened. United had already made up their mind and chose to let go of Van Gaal and bring in someone else. Jose Mourinho, the special one. The man who was a thorn in their side for years when he managed Chelsea. The man who could win against anybody with his brand of football. The man who had turned unknowns like Frank Lampard, Joe Cole, Didier Drogba and Ida Gudjonsson into world beaters. They believed, and the world believed, that Jose Mourinho was going to get Manchester United back to winning ways. And everyone believed that Marcus Rashford would finally come good under the veteran Portuguese manager. Everybody was wrong. Rashford was a brilliant player, but Jose Mourinho was a brand of football that means the world to him. It was United's legendary manager, Sir Alex Ferguson, who said, Attack wins you games, defence wins you titles. This was the same mantra that Jose Mourinho lived by, and this is the same mantra that he is prepared to die by. After Sir Alex Ferguson, Manchester United's defence became rubbish, putting it mildly, and Jose Mourinho wanted to change that. And to change that, he wanted to start his defence from the front. Unfortunately for Rashford, he had never been a good player when his team is required to press, and so he was relegated to the bench. He became a squad player. 
the teenage prodigy, the next best thing since Cristiano Ronaldo, the man who was touted as a future captain of Manchester United, reduced to playing the last few minutes of games. His confidence tanked and his form was shaken up, and the injuries, they seemed to get worse. At this point, everybody began to want Rashford out. When Jose Mourinho won the first major title since Sir Alex Ferguson, the 2016 UEFA Europa League, things began to look up. Maybe his style is truly going to work. Maybe we don't really need Marcus Rashford, everybody thought. And the talks of the youngster leaving Manchester United began to fill the air. But in typical Jose Mourinho fashion, everything began to fall apart. Media fights, player disagreements, the Portuguese manager began to bare his claws at everyone who made a comment about his style of football, and that tension began to rub off on his team. Soon, they lost their identity, and he was forced to leave the club. In steps one of the club's former strikers, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, to head the club in the interim. He was a nostalgic appointment and one who got the approval of everybody concerned. He was Manchester United through and through and understood better than the past coaches why the club needed to be on top. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer hit the ground running. Big wins, small wins, narrow escapes, entertaining football. Manchester United was fun again. And Marcus Rashford got his groove back. The club gave Ole a permanent contract and for Rashford that meant a lot. He now had a manager who believed in him again, just like Van Gaal, and he delivered. Big goals, small goals, match-winning goals, tremendous free kicks. Marcus Rashford was scoring goals for fun under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. His most famous goal under the Norwegian manager was the absolute banger of a free kick in the 2019 FA Cup semi-final against Chelsea. Marcus Rashford! Oh boy. Now that is a goal that Manchester United will definitely frame for their museum. Marcus Rashford was doing numbers but his injury problems persisted, and when he got injured, he took a while to regain his form because other players took advantage of his absence to stamp their place in the team. And the negatives were back. Okay, that's it, Rashford has to go, we don't care anymore, became the cries of the Old Trafford faithful. And then, things got worse for Marcus Rashford. Cristiano Ronaldo, the man who he was expected to replace within the team, returned triumphantly to the club in 2021. After 12 years, their one true golden boy returned as a conqueror of the world, and he was ready to make Manchester United his home and rule the world from there once again. The first casualty? Marcus Rashford. The then 24-year-old was sent to the bench to make way for Cristiano Ronaldo, who hit the ground running. At the time, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was already getting flack for not winning anything. Cristiano Ronaldo came and gave everyone hope that things could change. Marcus Rashford knew he couldn't compete with a player of Cristiano Ronaldo's caliber, so he accepted his fate. He became a squad player. It helped him find himself. He even tried to train like Ronaldo. He adopted his fitness regimen, his dietary regimen, and even his sleeping patterns. Marcus Rashford tried to soak in as much as he could from Cristiano Ronaldo so that he could get better and play for longer just like the legendary Portuguese forward. But at the same time, it was a big thorn in his side. Cristiano Ronaldo commands the star treatment wherever he goes. Teams are overhauled for him, changes to training regimen are made for him, even management styles are modified to suit him. Marcus Rashford had no problems with all of this, except that he wanted to play. And even though he was professional about it, his ambition sometimes spilled over and it caused problems between him and Cristiano Ronaldo. But here's the thing. Cristiano Ronaldo was scoring and Marcus Rashford was not. And as you'd expect, the calls for Rashford to leave became louder than ever. You'd expect things to go so well with Cristiano Ronaldo, but they didn't. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer did not win anything either, and so he was fired. A very messy 2022 later, and Cristiano Ronaldo followed Ole out of the door after Eric Ten Hag became Manchester United's coach. And that was the turnaround moment for Marcus Rashford. Just like the last Dutchman who had faith in him and gave him all the confidence in the world, Eric Ten Hag has built his team around the lad. Marcus Rashford is now the team's main man and is dealing with the now minor pressure of staying injury-free. Even if he gets injured, it's certain that whenever he returns, he goes straight into the starting eleven. For now though, his 9-game scoring run has now made Manchester United title contenders again. People are even starting to wonder why he was benched for Cristiano Ronaldo in the first place. Marcus Rashford is no longer a kid. He is now a man. And he is now THE man. Manchester United fans, let your praise be louder than your disrespect.